Coming up, Tima members set up a medical clinic in Jiayi for Dajia Mazu procession participants. A university student with autism wins Taiwan's first gold medal at the 9th International Olympics. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. In Taiwan, the annual procession of Mazu passed through Jiayi recently. For the occasion, Daling Tsuji Hospital and Tima volunteers set up a temporary medical clinic. At the same time, other Tsuji volunteers also set up a small Jingsi stand to promote vegetarianism and Tsuji's global mission. As the procession of Mazu reached Jiayi, Tima and Dalin Tsuji Hospital were there to meet the revelers with the temporary medical clinic. <laughs> This clinic is offering services in acupuncture, massage, gua sha, and of course, treating wounds. Tima wants to ensure that they can help as many people in need as possible. On site is Tima doctor Ding Ching Xiong, who has set aside his clinic hours to come serve here. This morning we had a case of someone passing out, probably low blood sugar. After we made sure he was okay, we sent him off in an ambulance. Another more serious case was a young man who likely fell during the procession, and his thumb was probably kicked. His thumbnail was torn, and he needed emergency treatment. After the injuries are dealt with, most people can rejoin the procession. Volunteers are also on site managing a small Jing Si stand as they teach passersby about Suji's mission, including recycling and vegetarianism. Our Suji volunteers here have done so much. They've been passing out lunches and keeping the place clean. Thank you so much, Zhiji. Although their faiths are different, Tsuji volunteers and the residents here have come together in companionship. Tsuji volunteers hope all the worshippers and spirits alike can complete their journey in peace. Recently, Da'ai Kindergarten in Malaysia's Malacca State invited some dentists to come and teach the students the proper way to brush and care for their teeth. After a dental check, it was found that among 98 young students, 22 were in need of tooth fillings. With their mouth wide open, what could they be hoping to find? Here at Dai Kindergarten in Malaysia's Malacca State, a dental check of 98 students finds that 22 of them will need tooth fillings. I think they've just never learned how they should brush before you sleep and after you wake up. These are important measures. For children, their molars will last until they are 12 or 13 years old so we can help them with the fillings. Since it is better to prevent problems than treat them later, the dentists here today are using models to show children proper brushing technique. A short video also shows the children how serious and scary tooth decay can be. If we can instill these lessons in children when they are young, then it will definitely have a great impact on their teeth as they grow up in the future. Learning the proper brushing method is very simple, and the children get the hang of it right away. Before, I was brushing sideways, which was wrong. If we brush like that, we can damage our gums. Brushing is really important to keep our teeth nice and clean. <laughs> After understanding how to care for their teeth, these children's teeth are clean and their smiles shining bright. Honoring one's parents and respecting the elderly have always been an important part of Tsuji's teachings. The charities is always reminding the public to honor their parents in a timely fashion and also regularly visit seniors living alone or in senior home. In today's Tsuji 50th anniversary series, we meet a daughter-in-law who sets an example for all. I've always felt that we share a special affinity. For the past three decades, I'm truly grateful for her. Speaking softly and attending too tenderly, Sunny is now looking after her own mother, but her mother-in-law instead. As the 90-year-old senior could no longer chew, she could only eat pureed food. Her medication has to be grounded up as well. The other day she said to me, why don't you just let me die already? I said, Mom, you shouldn't talk like this. You have been very kind to us, especially me. And then she reached up wanting to pat my back, so I leaned forward. She then said, actually, you have been very good. I was just overcome with emotion. 
son and her husband had been living in South Africa for years and couldn't turn to her mother-in-law. However, when a senior visited or when the couple came back to visit, they always got along. It wasn't until last year when the senior developed Alzheimer's that prompted Sen to move back to look after her. <laughs> Not long after the senior gets up, she will want to lie down. Every day, she repeats the same routine. This is the classic symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. She just can't focus on something for long. She will want to get up and move around a bit. Sun remains tender and patient as she continues to care for her disabled mother-in-law, as if caring for her own mother. <laughs> Because I have little patience, my temper used to be bad. But when I was at home before, my mother-in-law was always quiet and never scolded anyone, even if you made a mistake. I thought, how can there be a mother-in-law like this? Influenced by their parents, since children are also close to their grandma, and also help look after her in spite of her condition. Like my big brother and I, or our cousins, see our grandma the way she is now which is far from the person she was. We still very much love her. In modern society, filial piety is often overlooked. Scholars believe in the old agricultural society, filial piety was the foundation of all ethics and the stabilizing force of society. The young must honor the old, while the old must be kind to the young. This gives rise to the concept of respect and subsequently mutual love. When government policies, society and families are governed by such principles, everything will surely be more harmonious. Scholars believe the five bounds helped establish people's relationship with each other and society in the old days. However, after the Industrial Revolution, the economic prosperity led to the disintegration of the five bounds. When people get away further from their family, their life no longer adheres to a proper routine. They no longer reflect on their actions. As technology advances, people begin to rely less on their family for support, and thus they become more self-centered. Using modern language to express these Confucianism concepts, Master Zheng Yang has emphasized the importance of filial piety. To respect the old, they should be living at home and looked after by their offspring. The master believes that the elderly should be living with their children, so we have been working on geriatric care. In 1998, Ziji began its geriatric day care program, where seniors can come during the day and be looked after by volunteers and medical personnel. <laughs> They're so much happier here. There are more excitement in their life as well. As many of our seniors farm for a living, they teach us to farm here, which helps their suffering from Alzheimer's. For some, Ziji's recycling centers are just like a geriatric daycare center. If you're bored, you can come here. There are things to do, people to talk to, and food to eat. This is the best. Ziji is also teaching the younger generations to honor their parents. Through serving tea, children can express their gratitude to their mom and dad. Through this chance, parents know their children have grown up, or the children know they can express their gratitude by taking action.
，那会当安尼，一代做好一代看，老是受尊重的，有礼节的，安尼的社会，老人哪有啥问题呢？ If people learn to honor their seniors once again, a family will grow steadily and no longer will we have children wandering on the street. Before getting the lost children home, first seniors will have to learn to smile. The revival of filial piety may not be easy, but it is what society nowadays desperately needs. 60 teachers from Kaohsiung's Wenfu Elementary School visited the Ziji Kaohsiung Jingsi Hall to learn more about environmental issue through a Buddhist exhibition. They helped to absorb more knowledge during the visit, which they could later on pass on to their students. This piece of furniture can be a chair or lie flat as a bed. It attracts the interest of this elderly teacher who is paying close attention. 60 teachers from Kaohsiung's Wenfu Elementary School went online to register to visit Buddhist exhibition at the Ziji Kaohsiung Jingsi Hall to learn more about recycling so the knowledge can be brought back to the school. Wenfu Elementary is adjacent to an industrial zone, so our teachers are very involved in environmental education issues. I hope that through this visit, I can learn more about cherishing resources and can lead children to continue this education. Through this interactive video, teachers also get to relive Typhoon Morakot and the Kaohsiung gas explosion. Through this experience, they get a greater appreciation for the urgent need to care for the earth. When the heart is pure, there will be fewer disasters. This simple phrase left a very deep impression on me. I think that we need to continually teach students about caring for the earth, because there is only one earth. As teachers, we should have the right concepts which we can give to children. This is a problem that they must face in the future. Master Zheng Yan has said that education builds hope, which highlights the important role of teachers. With this in mind, teachers eagerly absorb information about environmental issues on this guided tour, with the hopes of passing it on to the next generation. In China, 47 students recently joined event for Ziji Scholarship students attending Hunan University of Chinese Medicine. At the event, Ziji volunteers wanted the students to know that they are there for more than just financial assistance, but also personal support. Gather here are 47 economically disadvantaged students who, with good academic performance, have been awarded Ziji scholarships to study at Hunan University of Chinese Medicine. These are advertisements for Taiwanese telephone carriers. Some of them are touching stories about students studying far from home. The volunteers ask students to write a letter home to their parents and offer them opportunities to speak on stage. Soon after I returned home, my father passed away, and then three days later, I received word of my uncle's death. My Tsuji family found out about my family's situation and gave us encouragement and support. Ziji not only offers these students financial assistance, but Ziji is also there for spiritual guidance and emotional strength. Taiwan, a student at National Taiwan University, Chen Hanshen, was diagnosed with autism. In March this year, he went to France for the 9th App Olympics, a skills competition for individuals with disabilities. In the industrial electronics segment, he earned Taiwan's first gold medal. Before, some soldering he did leaked and was not good. And here, you can see the terrific progress he has made. Forty to fifty of these circuit boards are all done by him. Soldering these circuits requires precise movement, vision, and concentration. 
Chen Hansen is able to do this work for more than 10 hours at a time. I have different interests than others, as most have little interest in soldering, because they find it boring. But I actually enjoy such repetitive actions. He had some problems in the beginning, which he kept inside. During his training, he didn't dare express his problems, or wasn't able to express them clearly. When Hansung was two years old, he was diagnosed with mild autism and limited communication ability. Fortunately, at Songshan High School of Agriculture and Technology, he was able to work with Chen Mao Zhang for three years. Even after graduation, he would return to school for two days a week to strengthen his training. Fortunately, in junior high school, he encountered some good teachers. We found that his math wasn't outstanding, but his memory is good, and he was also good at understanding math concepts. Overcoming this disability and not being afraid of setbacks, Hansen traveled to France in March to take part in the ninth International Ab Olympics, winning gold in an electronics occupational skills competition, a first for Taiwan in 36 years. He also earned a prize from the Ministry of Labor and the praise of his alma mater. When the competition began, he really focused and did his work with great speed and accuracy. When the French judge saw his board, he gave him a thumbs up and said it was great. I want to thank my mother and my teacher for cultivating me. Winning the gold medal will give me more courage to face challenges at the next level. In Malaysia, Tsuji Joho Baru Kindergarten recently held the Vegetable Passport event. The kindergartners were asked to live on the vegetable planet for a month. During the period, they will refrain from eating meat. After making the vow, the students put on the animal costumes they made, walked through a tunnel, and board the spaceship. They will fly to the Vegetable Planet. Whether you are birds, eagles, or tigers, you love eating vegetables and fruits. They must live on a vegetable planet for a month, so they must live in harmony with each other. Through this activity, we want the students to know that all the animals are our friends, so we shouldn't eat them out of our desire. The parents were also invited to a lecture where a nutritionist explains to them being vegetarian can still receive enough nutrients. Everyone can adopt a vegetarian diet to protect the earth. The DIY trend has swept up the new Taipei City Library. To work on the upcoming World Scholars Day on April 23rd, the library is offering some creative new courses in their auditorium, which give participants a chance to learn with a hands-on approach. The library has invited instructors from all sorts of disciplines to offer a class and to make the library much more than a place to simply read books. Just mix the alcohol with the natural camphor powder and mix it well. Then you have a complete storm glass. This is Da Ai TV's young anchor, Hua Yong Hui. She introduces material and carefully explains how to make a DIY storm glass. The beautiful crystals formed by the camphor in a storm glass can be used to observe changes in the temperature. It's something to break the monotony of every day. More than just listening to a lecture, people can try making these storm glasses themselves. It's really simple, so anyone in the class can easily join in. Another young anchor makes recommendations for some fun classes being offered at the library. I'm here to tell you that in this class, you all have a chance to try some very good fruit popsicles. When residents come to the library, we want to offer more than just books and reference materials. We also want them to have the chance to try different things with these classes and give them some fresh ideas for their daily lives. With the variety of courses available here at the new Taipei City Library, there's something available for everyone. With a simple look at their website, you can easily come join a class for some new DIY ideas. Tainan City's Annan District suffered damage from a recent Mainong earthquake. 
which caused soil liquefaction that damaged many houses. When a professor at National Kaohsiung First University of Science and Technology carried out a soil liquefaction survey, he came across many of the damaged homes and later recruited student volunteers to help make repairs. Picking up these tools, these students immediately begin applying concrete to these cracked walls. They're all students at National Kaohsiung First University of Science and Technology. Resembling a professional mason, this female sophomore has represented her school in a painting competition. They are here to help Anand District recover from the recent earthquake and resulting danger of soil liquefaction. Our specialty is trying to give residents quality housing, and we're fortunate to have the ability to do this. After the Mainong earthquake, the university's professor, Lu Ziwei, traveled to Tainan's Anan district to study the problem of soil liquefaction. Over the next two months, he identified nearly 300 homes that were damaged and needed repair. He later began to solicit student volunteers to help. This area has many victims. In the classroom, I asked them if there was anyone willing to help. Many raised their hands, and the response was very enthusiastic. Seeing more than 10 students volunteering to help repair cracks in these walls, local residents are very moved. They're like helpers sent by the Buddha. I was very worried about the situation because it's hard to find workers to do this work. Leaving their classroom to contribute what they have learned, the students are empowered to help those in their community who need help rebuilding their lives after the earthquake. City volunteers in Shanghai, China, regularly visit the residents of Qianhe Nursing Home. One of the city volunteers, Lu Chuantong, is also a senior, but he still encourages these residents not to idle their lives away and often tells them about the benefits of doing recycling. With his encouragement, one grandmother has started to collect recyclables. They may be old and slow, but city volunteers still see them as treasure. We are old, but it doesn't mean we are useless. We can still protect the earth, and that's the greatest merit. Granny Wan heard it and is also doing it. She's been recycling for months. If it's discarded, it's a waste and bad for the air. This is something that will benefit the country, so I want to help. She is over 80 years old, but she still walks every day from the first floor to the third floor to collect milk cartons and the milk bottle caps. The right attitude gives the granny the strength to give of herself despite her old age. In celebration of Tsuji's 50th anniversary, city volunteers in Taipei and New Taipei City are preparing to present the musical adaptation of The Essence of Infinite Meanings. These onstage volunteers recently gathered at the San Chongqing Si Hall for a rehearsal. Practicing hard, they hope to convey the spirit behind Tsuji's early days through their performance. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.